carbon fiber and stitches for reinforcing uh, wall or floor cracks. In this case, I'm uh, spacing them out about a foot and a half using one stitch as a guide to uh, draw the line for the grinding. I've already completed the 10 minute mender repair on this crack. Um, watch another video for that procedure. Uh, in this case, I'm using a 4.5 inch diamond grinder. Uh, it's just a regular angle grinder with a better blade on it. It's available in the store. We're going to be cutting the, the length of the line plus slightly past. I think it's exact as like 11 inches. Uh, in this case, the depth is just the uh, far as this grinder can go. Um, depending on the grinder you're using, you might have to play with it. But uh, the stitch is about an inch tall, so you know, an inch and a quarter is the depth you're going to be aiming for. But in this case, this grinder taps out of exactly the right depth, so it works out pretty good. I'm using a vacuum to contain the dust. Um, this is a regular shop vac, so you can see it's still spraying some dust. Um, you may want to wear a respirator if you're in a confined space. Um, give the, each cut a clean vacuum. Make sure it's all nice and clean. In this case, I'm putting the stitch uh, across diagonal. Um, if you can see the crack here, it goes in a Y formation. So you're going to want to put it in both directions in this situation. Here I'm just uh, letting the diamond do its work. Make sure the vacuum stays on it, keeping the dust down. Um, in this case, I already pre-cut and installed a whole bunch for before the video. I'm just doing the last couple for the video purposes. These stitches are fairly simple. The epoxy comes in bags. The stitches come as individuals. Um, you mix the epoxy on a piece of cardboard and just trowel it in. There's no need for a tube set or the caulking gun for the tube set. The whole kit's designed to be disposable um, to keep the price down. If you would like to order large quantities, just give us an email and we can definitely make a custom order. In this case, in this case, this video is designed for the DIY kit, which is 15 stitches with enough epoxy for that. Um, we recommend fixing the crack first with 10 minute mender or whatever product you prefer. Um, Cause there's enough epoxy for the stitches, but not for the crack repair around it. So just keep that in mind. Here we're going to install some stitches. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to dry install one of the stitches just to make sure it actually fits in case you got to grind it again. And then here, like I was saying, I troweled the epoxy out of the bag. Um, in the instructions, there is a way to mix a little bit, but in this case, I'm installing all 15 stitches. So I'm just going to mix the whole bag in one big batch cause it doesn't cure that fast. So you can just make it one big go on a piece of cardboard. It's not too complicated. You can watch the two colors kind of blend together. It turns into like a dark brown once it's mixed correctly. Once it's all mixed, we're going to apply some stitches here. So pretty much everything I'm using here comes in the kit. Um, the only thing you might need is a diamond blade. There is an option to buy that. Here I'm going to be troweling the epoxy into the slot. Um, if you are worried about spread, you can tape and paper around it so you're only contaminating a very small area. I'm going to be grinding afterwards so it doesn't matter. Here you're going to want to push into the crack and watch for the epoxy to be bursting out beside it. Just continually push it until the void is full. And then once that's done, you're going to want to take some epoxy and then wet the stitch. So trowel epoxy on both sides of the stitch, make sure it's nice and saturated getting it the residue of the epoxy onto the stitch. Get a little extra. In this case, you're able to scrape the extra back up so now it's wet. Then you can push it into the crack, into your slot. Once it's pushed in, you can use the trowel to trowel uh, epoxy in on top of it and then pick up the excess epoxy on top of it. Just like that, I'm reusing the same epoxy that came out of the slot to push back on top of it. You can have paper here instead of spreading it all over the place on the concrete, but I'm doing a surface grind afterwards, so it, it didn't really matter. And then you just rinse and repeat. You dry install the stitch, make sure it actually fits, make sure a rock or something didn't fall in. And then you take some of your mixed epoxy, you give it a little extra mixing, and then you push it in until you see it bursting out the sides beside the trowel. And once you've finished that, you take the epoxy and wet the stitch again. And uh, I often just use the whole kit on all 15 stitches in one go because it's not complicated. 
So you wet the stitch, get it nice and wet, and then you push the stitch in. And once the stitch is installed, you take the trowel, clean up, push the stitch down a little bit, and then use the epoxy that pushed out to push back on top of the stitch. And this uh, epoxy and stitch combo is rated for stronger than the actual concrete is. So oftentimes, uh, if there's any failures because of the concrete failed nearby, not the actual stitch. Uh, I don't have the exact weights beside me, but it's in the couple thousands. Well, if you did the math on the square inches of the concrete to stitch carbon fiber stitch. The benefit of this over the metal is the bonding strength because metals very weak compared to carbon. There's a few better products out there, but they require a lot more installing and a lot more effort. Um, for carbon fiber, ours is probably the, the most efficient for installing. Um, if you wanted to use this on a wall, it is doable. We usually prefer carbon fiber cloth in a strap formation, but they are usable on walls. We just use the cloth usually before we use the stitch, but it is usable. And you just rinse and repeat. Fill the hole, put your stitch in, clean the excess. And like I said, it comes with 15, so you can do either, we recommend one foot spacing, so you can do 15 feet. If you're just doing a little extra reinforcing, we've done up to four feet. Um, given most floors, um, rebar is debatable. It's better to keep the footage down to one or two feet. Um, and like you see here in this video, the Y crack, I put it in both directions. It's important to uh, get the whole tree or the, or the spider webbing to, to kind of seal off any uh, extra tails that might form off this crack. Because if you miss one, there's a chance that it might push the load to that uh, spider crack that's there originally. Just pushing this in, rinse and repeat, prime the stitch, and pushing in the hole. That's about it. If you don't like the residue on top, if you didn't use paper, give it 24 hours to cure and then take a surface grinder and just grind it off. It's pretty simple. Um, or you could put tape and paper down just to um, keep it cleaned up a little bit. Um, user's preference on that one. But uh, it's by far the easiest uh, reinforcement you can do on a floor crack. If uh, you're looking to purchase large quantities or just single kits, give our website a look. We usually ship same day, U.S. or Canada, and uh, thanks for watching.